Welcome back, it's the Clay Golem. We are back in Foundry VTT. Uh, we want to complete our, hopefully today, complete the Ruins of Thunder Tree. This is part of our Fandelver and Below, the hidden, the hidden? <laughs> the Shattered Obelisk uh, adventure series. We'll see if we can get this one done. So in the last one, um, we finished off, we put in our, um, we put in some of our markers for areas five, six, and seven, put in our monsters, put in a bit of treasure and things. One of the things that we uh, got a little bit, I got a little bit stuck on, was the creation of this magic battle axe. So it's a battle axe plus one, which is easy. Um, but what's special about this is when you use it to attack plant type creatures, so anything with the type plant, um, it does maximum damage. So rather than rolling 1d8, it automatically does 8 plus your modifiers. Um, and it was a question of like, oh, how are we going to, how do we do that? Because that doesn't exist already in our foundry thing. So we need to create that as either create it as an ability to apply to a weapon or just create the weapon with that ability. Uh, and the answer really is going to be to write a macro for it. I've had a little play at that. Um, <laughs> didn't get very far. <laughs> it's not my strength. Um, and I have found just, you know, just by Google, doing Google and looking around, I found where other people have had similar type of challenge and have come up with some solutions. One of the reasons I started this series is because when I was looking for tutorials of how to kind of get started with Foundry, I found so many things were two years plus out of date. Uh, and that's exactly what I found with this. With version 11 of Foundry, there's been some core changes. Those scripts no longer work. Not even close. Um, so at the moment, I can't find a script that either already does this for me or is close enough that I can adapt it, such as, you know, works on Undead or something like that. Uh, so I'm going to pause that for a while. That's a problem I need to spend a bit more time on trying to solve. Um, but it's also exactly the kind of problem that would be really useful to solve to help you guys when you get to similar things being at going, actually, I've got an item that I wanted to do something very specific in specific circumstances. Um, so sorry, I can't help you yet, uh, but we will. We will get there. Honest. That's the plan. <laughs> Okay, so let's finish the rest of this. We're bearing in mind, we know that we can come back and just edit that um, whenever we are ready to do it. And worst case scenario, it's our game. We could just go, you know what, that's a bit hard. We could just change it out for a different weapon if we wanted to and just say, no, actually, it's just a battle axe plus one or, or something similar. Okay, so we can just change it if we would like. Okay, so let's go to... Thunder Tree, we've got this here. Um, thank you for all the tips in the previous video. Um, some of them are quite embarrassing because they're so blinking obvious and simple um, and I've just missed them. <laughs> Story of my life. <laughs> but that's okay. That's the way it goes, isn't it? Uh, that's here to help everybody. Okay, right. So what do we need to do? We need to do Area 8, which is the old smithy. So let's stick that one in. So this is Area uh, U8. Um, and the old smithy is this area just down here, uh, just under my journal here. So let's slap that one down. Uh, we can add in area nine as well, which is called the herbalist's shop, or what's left of it. Make sure we put that as a map location. There we go. That's U9. And I've actually realized that this is kind of an easy way to do it. It's just get everything slapped on the map and then come back and update them. Um, it doesn't matter which way we do it. It's just for me, this is working at the moment. Uh, what have we got down here? So we want, um, just to make things awkward, I'm going to do these out of order. The Dragon Cultist Cottage. Map location. Uh, and this is... U13, like I say, just to be a little bit tricksy. And that's actually this one down here, which is not surprising. It looks quite intact. Um, we've got this building here. And this is this is the Weaver's Cottage. Okay, you must remember to change that to say it's a map location. Um, and that is number 12. Let me slap that out over here. Good. What else have we got? Uh, we've only got a couple left now. Um, we've got 
the old garrison. And that is uh, number 10, I think it was. It is indeed. I'm slap that out. Now it's got the, the thing here. I think it's to do with this, this area just here. Um, but they've slapped that there. We'll find out when we get to it in a bit more detail. And the only one we got left is uh, number 11, which is the... Uh, oh, I am an idiot. <laughs> and you knew that. <laughs> you knew that. Um, this is the town square map location the town square is area 10 the town square is over here this one the old garrison is area 11 was it yeah i've just not read it properly there we go um so i'll get rid of that one drag this one out uh, and that's up there that's the old garrison Hello, didn't want to delete it. Save. There we go. All right, so we've got those slapped out. Lovely jubbly. Now, because I've done these in a funny order, they're not in the correct order. Just a reminder, we can just drag these into any order we like. Um, so if you've not seen that before, now you have. Now these are order. It's going to make sense when we're just scanning down there for which location it's in. Lovely jubbly. All right, let's go back to um, number eight then. This was the old smithy. Uh, again, we're just going to be editing the journal, uh, copying stuff over, and then making any amendments that we feel are necessary. So, uh, oops. I've forgotten how to use my fingers. Apologies. So, Control C over there. And then, do you know what? Somebody pointed out something that I, I do know, and I've known for quite a number of years and for whatever reason I've just not applied it at all while doing this uh, let me show you because we know we have if I copy all of this and I paste it in it brings in the formatting so we're all over place and I'm resetting that formatting um, what they correctly said was if you do shift control and V it pastes it without the formatting um, I've known that for years <laughs> How many journal entries have I done? Um, just totally forgot that that was a thing. Okay, so um, yeah, embarrassing as that is. We could take these zombies, uh, this zombies here. Oh, not highlighting. Yeah, we go. Um, and we can drag that down there. All right, so there's a reason I just did that as well. <laughs> We have some really helpful people in the comments and it makes life so much easier. So uh, obviously one of the things I can do is I can drag these zombies and this is what I have been doing is I can drag them from over here, drag them in there um, and then deleting the words that I don't need or I can highlight what I want, drag it in and replaces it. Um, apologies, I've forgotten you. I know who, who made the comment of I've just forgotten your username so my sincere apologies because you've provided so many little tips and things and it's just how rude how rude am I uh, they rightly pointed out that when you hover over it will automatically search for these and bring up these things and actually I can drag that if you're watching carefully and because it's already highlighted it just replaces it it's just it's just much quicker than going over here to the SRD so there's <laughs> it's another little thing that saves us time and anything we can do to save time with the setup means we can focus on story, we can focus on development and interesting things rather than, while it's fun for me, it is admin of getting these things set up. Okay, so this talks about a very uh, variety of old tools, tongs, bellows, hammers, a pair of iron anvils are scattered around the interior of this building. Now again, we just did it with the actors. We can go to hammer. If I highlight hammer, you can see that I've, it's suddenly giving me this range of hammers. And you can see from these icons, these are items from the various uh, SRD, from the compendiums. You've got the little compendium thing. Or straight for my item things here. So I can link directly to any of these bits of equipment. So if they were like, oh, we're going to pick stuff up. If we jump it, drop it in the journal, let's just do that. If I drop it in the journal there... Um, save yes I've been listening I promise because it's in here if a character went oh I'll see if I can pick up a hammer we don't need to go and search to find the item in there because we've already got it in here 
Um, so again, it's just a nice little tip. Um, that just, it just saves time. Just saves time. Um, we got we haven't got a bellows. Uh, we've got tongues, not tongs, um, but we could do it with any of those kind of things if we wanted to, to get them set up. Um, chances are they're not going to be picking up those things, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, right, what does this actually say, though? So four ash zombies are slumped on the floor in the old smithy. So this is the old smithy down here. So let's chuck our... Now remember, yeah, they're ash zombies, but actually they're just normal zombies. That's That's all they are. So we can just throw these in. Wherever we feel like. They can be mostly slumped like that. Um, so they are slumped on the floor. When the characters enter, the monsters climb to their feet, lurch forward to attack. Once the zombies see the characters, they pursue them relentlessly, um, as is the zombies want. A variety of, variety of old tools and things. We just read that bit. And then it just straight away goes to talk about treasure. So I'm going to put my line in. Bold this just to make it clear. So, a battered old cabinet, half buried beneath the partial collapsed roof, contains a leather satchel filled with strange diamond shaped plates of a brown gold color. Each is about the size of a human hand, lightweight and tough as iron. The plates are brass dragon scales, which can be sold to an armorer or other interested buyer for a 75 gold total. So we can either just kind of go, oh, you find it, it's worth 75 gold, um, or we can create another item. So let's just duplicate this. We're going to open our A gate here, uh, and we're going to change this. Um, now, it says... I mean, it's got a lovely description and things like that, but I'm going to just call them brass dragon scales okay that's what they're going to be uh, i can go to description um, and then where it talks about strange diamond shaped leather plates of a brown color each is about the size of a human hand light in weight and tough as iron so i'm going to pop that into the description uh, Right, now, here's the next tip <laughs> that, that I think most of you probably know, and I'm an idiot, is um, I was doing details and things like that, and I was like, oh, how do I get back to the other item details and things? Because it wouldn't let me come out of it. Um, and I ended up duplicating the item just to start again, because it was being a bit weird, and I couldn't get out of the bloody description, which is ridiculous. Um, second icon in, this one here. It's a bit small to see what it actually is, and I've not actually hovered over it because, of, well, I don't know what that does. I'll ignore it. <laughs> it's save and close editor. Click that. I'm back here. Um, I did tell you that sometimes you guys leave really, really useful comments that are quite embarrassing. <laughs> like, how did I not even look at that? It's like, oh, dear Lord. <laughs> Madness. So, again, thank you very much for all the tips and stuff. Um, I don't mind looking like a, a bit of a ninny if it helps you guys. Because um, there will be other people, I'm sure. I hope there are other people who are as inept as I am. As an inept as I am. Um, and will find that useful. So... That's really good. I'm going to put this down as a material. Um, now, what I need to be careful of is one of my characters is going, oh, I'm going to keep it and I'm going to uh, make armor out of it myself. I'm more than happy for them to do that. Um, they might not sell it. They might choose to, to actually use that as a downtime skill. Great. Always willing to support that kind of stuff. Um, the only issue would be is uh, I need to work out what the mechanics are for that. But that's going to be in the downtime thing. All right. So I'm babbling. What does I do with my brass dragon scale? So I'm going to dump this down here and I'm going to create this as an item pile. Okay. Um, I mean, it's only one piece of treasure, isn't it? Do you know what? I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do that descriptively, but I am going to... Um, because I've got this as an item now, I can... Um, brass dragon scales. If I highlight that, 
see it's automatically going oh i found your brass dragon scales item i can drag that down so again so much quicker it's going to save a little bit of time i can slap that in there um, i can here we go there's that save changes icon i can do that as well uh, and it's here so there's the description whoever finds it chances are i'm going to have this open anyway i'm literally going to drag that into their character sheet bosh uh, and then they've got that item so i'm going to do it that way all right just on this occasion there's only one item don't need to do a loot pile for them to raid one item i can chuck in there job done right let's move on number nine the herbalist hut over here so let's edit this again let's uh so control c and then yeah we can dump that in there i want this to be bold Slap my line in. Uh, so this ruined shop is cluttered with sagging storage shelves, broken furniture, shards of glass, pieces of pottery, glint in the weeds and rubble next to rotted books and casks. So what the heck is going on in here? Uh, again, I'm just going to copy the whole thing in. We got a bit more treasure, so we'll need to decide what to do about that treasure. There we go. That's that control and shift V to paste it in without the formatting. I mean, it's crazy, but it's a bit of a game changer. All right, so this was a herb and alchemy shop belonging to the family of... Yeah, so if they come here, uh, I want my NPCs from Fandelva. Um, where are you, my dear? Okay, so I'm going to drop... It. See, look, I'm doing it the old way again, aren't I? Because I'm just so used to that. If I highlight this, it's going to bring it in. There we go. Uh, now a resident in Fandelin. We know about that. See the red brand hideout, blah, 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 blah. All the reagents and concoctions here have long, long since spoiled. Uh, the books are unreadable masses of rot. However, a small wooden case is hidden in a compartment um, beneath the, uh, the storage shelves. Character searching through the wreckage can find the case with a successful... Let's do a skill check. It's a skill using the ability of wisdom. And the skill is perception... DC 10. Uh, the check succeeds automatically if a Mariner has sent the party to find the heirloom because she tells them where to look, which is great. So that treasure. Um, oh, that annoys me when I miss one letter off the end. When <laughs> necessary no annoy me yes uh contain is uh the case is worth us contains a gold necklace with a fine emerald pendant worth 200 gold now have i already got a gold i've got a gold bracelet so again i haven't got a gold necklace uh so i'm going to duplicate i need to tidy up my items i really do it's it's a disgraceful mess over there um Gold necklace. It's worth 200 gold, which is pretty darn fine. Um, details wise, it's down as treasure. Yep, absolutely. We're happy with that. Um, like treasure, art object. Yeah, leave it at that. That's fine. Okay. So, uh, don't need a description under it. Just need something to shove in their character sheet for them to be able to do that with. We can close that over here. Gold necklace. Drag it in. Somebody's going to be cross with me for doing the wrong, doing the old ways. I'm now having to delete the words. <laughs> uh, with a fine emerald pendant worth 200 gold coins. Okay, so I'm happy with that. Um, just save that. We go, And again, just like before, if they do the search, they find it. It's one item. I'm just going to drag it across. It's just going to be as easy as it is creating an item pile. An item pile for one item. It's not really a pile, is it? It's just one item on the floor. Um, Again, you do whatever way was going to work for you and your group. I'm quite lazy. I want to automate lots of stuff and then I get bored. <laughs> and I know it's not just me. <laughs> okay, right. Copy, paste in the description for this. Oof, what, what happened there? It's weird. Something strange has happened here. Hang on a minute. Ignore me, just being a muppet. I'm all fingers, all fingers and no brain. That's my problem. Right, I want this bold, please. 
but it's not doing it because why is it? Well, I don't want a code block. I didn't tell it to be a code block, did I? Paragraph. Uh, paragraph. Oh, select the whole lot. Oh, what did? What the, <laughs> There's always something in there. What have I done? How have I done this? Oh, I do. Oh, I see. Right, that's a toggle on off. Right. Just yeah. Just leave it. As a... Thank you. <laughs> I'm sure Foundry has got a secret module built in it into it to make me look like an idiot. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Right, so we can copy and paste that in properly without turning it into code block. Um, useful though, if I need code block <laughs> stuff, I know about that now. Okay, the leaning statue. Oh yeah, we're up here, aren't we? Da -da, up in this section, okay, in the town square. So on the east side of town, the lane opens in a formal square, blah, 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 blah. Okay, the leaning statue is 10 foot tall, including the base. It depicts the hero of Neverwinter. Uh, da, 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 blah, 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 blah. Recognize the statue with um, a successful intelligence history check. So let's just put the, the role in there so we know it's there. So this is a skill check using the ability of intelligence, the one thing I struggle with. <laughs> uh, it's a history skill. Oh, dear me. <laughs> No. <laughs> In fairness, it is actually Friday today. <laughs> um, right, there we go. And we can whack that save button and check it's automatically updated for us here, which is good. All right, that's an easy one. Okay, that was an easy one. Struggled so much with that. Um, okay, old garrison. Let's open that up copy and paste I mean it can't get much more difficult than this you'd think but you know <laughs> ah right pop that in okay we've got a bit of combat here um, but nothing to I've done it again I know what I think I know what it is it's my fat fingers it's my fat fingers is holding that is accidentally hitting something else when I'm uh, pasting it in all right, so again, I know bits of the writing's a bit small for you guys, but this says five ash zombies lurk in this building, former members of the garrison, because we are talking about this one up here. Um, they still wear the remnants of rusted mail and soldier surcoats. These scraps of armor don't improve their armor class. The zombies animate and attack if any living creature disturbs their rest. Let's check some zombies out, five of them. And they don't all have to be together, of course. Where's my zombies? And we've got some different doors and bits here. We've got one down here. In fact, we'll put two down here. Okay, so the interior of the building still contains furnishings. And the main room, which is this one, so over, over this bit over here. Um, the main room has a ladder leading to a trap door to the roof. The main chamber contains two double bunks. While the chamber to the south has three double bunks. Providing quarters for 10 soldiers altogether. To the northwest of the main area are the kitchen and pantry, uh, which now contains piles of rotten sacks and barrels that once held meat, uh, salted meat. Vermin have long since devoured any foodstuffs. So I'm going to move you down into the main chamber. All right, so this talks about beds and things like that, but nothing particularly exciting. It's just, it's just a classic bundle. Um, so that's fine. We can close that. That's all good. Nothing to do there. Boring. We did all the walls, didn't we? Yep, we got all the walls in. We don't need to do anything special with any of those walls. Happy with those as they are. Um, Weaver's Cottage, number 12. This one down here. I've just closed my entire journal. Come here. Okay, number 12, Weaver's Cottage. What we got going on here? We got, okay, nothing huge. There's lots of locations here, but nothing hugely exciting for most of them. The game. Let's do that. Thank you. Um, and again, just just keep my commenters happy. <laughs> oh look, twig lights. Drag that in. Yep, nice. Oh. I mean, you have to not be a muppet to do these 
little shortcuts. Thank you very much. Okay, so four twig blights lurk in the thicket south of this ruin. Let's grab our twig blights. Again, let's uh, let's copy and paste them from our previous ones because we know they're all good and they're all the right size and everything else. I must, right, I'm going to finish this, then I'm going to install tokenies. Because this will be driving you guys nuts and watching me drag them over. You've told me how to solve that and I'm still doing it the hard way. Okay, so look to in the thicket south of this ruin. So they're down here in this thicket and there's four of them. So copy, paste, copy, paste. Um, oh, it already did it. Yep, good. Have them all down here. Um, two needle blights hide in the trees on the east side of the lane. Where was our needle blights? There you are. Brilliant. Drag you across as well. Uh, to the that's that are over here. Okay. Uh, a character within 10 feet of one of the blights can make a. We know about this. Skill using whoop, using <laughs> an ability we don't have. Uh, ability wisdom and the skill is perception and it was DC 13. Check detecting creatures presence. We just save that. Just make sure that comes up. Yes, it does look beautiful. Um, detecting the creature's presence on a successful check. Otherwise, the blights attack any character that comes within five feet of them. Uh, development. So let's just make this bold. Any loud noises here will alert the cultists, which we're getting to in a second, uh, in area 13. Uh, that's a really easy one. Not a lot going on in there. It's just a ruin. Which is fine. The whole village is supposed to be ruined. You can't have everything being exciting. You would expect most places to be ruins. All right, the cultists. Then let's let's do these gits. Okay, so why spread? All right, let's. Uh, that's going to annoy you. <laughs> there we go. So this is this just a bit of background. A widespread group called the Cult of the Dragon seeks to forge alliance with the powerful dragons. Of the Sword Coast. Towards that end, four cultists recently tracked the green dragon known as Venom Fang to Thunder Tree. And again, we can do that. We just go, oh, Venom Fang. I double clicked it. I didn't mean to double click it. We can just drag it in there um, to Thunder Tree. The cultists are waiting for the right moment to approach the dragon. They've been spying on the dragon from afar, trying to gauge Venom Fang's demeanor and needs when the characters approach this area. So that is just background stuff. So I'm going to get rid of that bit. And I'm just going to bring in that description. Make that bold. Uh, I'm going to put a line in here just so that we know that that is now something else, which is just a bit of background. And the bit after that, we can add in. It's a bit chunky bit of writing here, so we're going to bring the whole lot in. And this is where that control shift V is a bit of a massive time saver when we're copying lots of stuff in. All right, so I'm going to put another line in there just to split up that background information from this. All right, the doors to this cottage are barred from the inside. So this is the cottage. So first of all, yep, I want to lock that and lock that. There we go. I forgot I can just right click on them to lock them. Uh, the doors of the cottage are barred from the inside. So if I just go to my walls, you can see that these are now locked. That's uh, nice and handy, isn't it? Um, requiring a successful strength check to force open. Um, so for that one, oh, how do we do just a plain strength check? Slash... Um, I'm going to have to quickly check that. Okay, so um, 
It's stupid, isn't it? Uh, I think it's just check strength no equals and then the DC, which is 20. And I think that's it. Um, again, if we hit save, we can see that, yes, that's got it. Yeah, so I think that's correct. Boom, yeah, no selected token. So it's trying to do that. So that's nice and easy. I just wanted to look it up. I mean, thankfully, some absolute genius decided to put all of the shortcuts into a video that they did where they were covering the journal updates, <laughs> referencing my own material because I can't remember them all. Um, now, if I was really smart, what I would do is on my, I've still got GM screen installed and I'm not using it. I mean, that's why have I not got those codes on here? Hey, eh? what is wrong with me? I've got this right here as a tool. And it could be right in front of me like that. Note to self, I'm going to fix that. Um, I also said a moment ago I was going to sort of token ease out and I didn't. I moved on. Okay, right. So uh, the shutters are also barred from the inside. Can be forced open with a successful... Oh, I can do this one now. <laughs> uh, this is going to be a check strength. And I don't need the word DC in here. And this is what's confusing. Sometimes you have the word DC in it. Sometimes you don't. Okay. So again, just whack that save. And we can see it's just brought that straight in, which is great. A six human cultists hide in the house. Four stand guard at a time. Two in each room. Okay. So where's our cultists? Um, we made them before. Or I made them before. Um, there we are. All right. There's our cultist. So we can slap those in. And it does say that there's two in each room um, while the others rest in the large chamber. What? Six human cultists hide in the house. Four stand guard at a time, two in each room. Oh, I see. Uh, on eight hour shifts while the others rest in the larger chamber. So, yeah, so there's going to be four in here. Two of them are resting. So one thing I need to be careful of is not to be having my token, my uh, map token in the way of characters and things, which is good. Uh, duh, 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 duh. So, uh, ga oh, again. Let's drag that cultist in. Oh, I've not highlighted everything. Um, so, four stand guard, blah, 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 blah. The cultists wear black cloaks cut to resemble dragon wings and black leather masks, stylized dragon horns. In addition to common, they speak draconic. The interior of the house is dusty and strung with cobwebs. The only furnishings are a small stove a table, two chairs, and a bunk, which the cultists share. Yeah. Uh, at a development thing here. So let's put a line under that. Uh, development. The cultists aren't interested in fighting anyone and prefer to be left alone. The leader is an ambitious young man named Fabric, uh, who hopes to rise through the ranks quickly by earning the allegiance of the dragon in area U7. His fellow cultists don't share his ambition and flee if he is captured or killed. So let's pick one of these. Um, congratulations, you have been promoted. You are now um, F A V. You are now Fabric. Okay, that's your name. Just so, again, the players can't see those pop-ups, but just so that I know which one is which, um, and therefore if this one here happens to be happens to go down and die, he's going to be the one doing most of the talking. If he happens to go down or die, the others will flee. So if the characters talk to the cultist, Fabric explains that they've come to treat with the dragon, whose name he doesn't know. If the characters express a similar desire, they suggest an allegiance or an alliance. He actually plans to offer the characters to the dragon as part of his tribute. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, and if a fight ensues, the cult is side with the dragon against a party in the hope of earning its trust. Uh, we've got some treasure. Um, just the stats on these cultists. They ain't tough. It's uh, more of a role play than it is a challenging fight, that's for sure. In addition to what it carries, Fabric has a small coffer containing a tribute to the green dragon. Six lustrous amethysts. Did I create any amethysts? No, of course I didn't. Uh, and, and of course, I could just change any of these. I don't have to use what they've got in here. I can just change it. So these are going to be worth 50 gold each. Um, and these are amethysts. Uh, so these, are, they've called them, yeah, let's just call them amethysts. Amethysts. 
or amethyst rather okay so he's got some of those that's great let's uh okay again i'm doing it the old way because it's what i'm used to and it's not the best way that's the best way so he's got six of those worth 50 gold each did i, I think i oh come on brain I'm fairly sure I updated the price. Yes, 50 gold each, which is great. He also carries a potion of flying in a stoppered vial around his neck. So let's go to our SRD. Let's look at our items. Uh, we can just search the whole thing. Uh, we've got potion of flying. We can come and um, just drop that in there. Sorry, I've done it the old way. <laughs> uh, I'm slightly paranoid now because you guys keep telling me the better ways to do it and you're absolutely correct and i'm now stuck in the habit of doing it the wrong way and i could just feel your frustration and go oh, he's such an idiot <laughs> okay so again i'm happy to drop those things in there i can just drag them across to the character sheet no problem i don't need to do i could absolutely of course i could do it as a loot pile um, we've done a few loot piles for this one it's just a different way of doing it i'm happy with that right a couple of things i need to do i'm going to go to my manage modules um what the heck's it called what was it called what were we looking at oh no now i'm going to embarrass myself i'm going over here um i want to oh by the way that 5e stat block imported we looked at in a previous video i've not got it activated in this game world i definitely want to activate that because that's that's awesome um da, 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 da. we looked at obviously we looked at a couple of different things grid scale i don't necessarily need that right now uh, loot sheet is not what we want. Enhanced journal we turned off because we didn't need it. Tokenese, that's what I'm. That's what I'm after. I got there. I might be slow, but I got there. Leave me alone. <laughs> All right, I slap some tokenese in, just so Haley up the top there. We can. I've got to actually, you know, configure it, of course, because that's really, really slow. I'm sure the default tokenese is much slower than the uh, the normal one, anyway. All the way down here. Uh, token ease. I think last time I did I end up with it on about eight or something. No, nope, I'm going to put it up. Still not fast enough. Need all speed. That's definitely better. Okay. And of course, I can I can just change that whenever I want. All right. So there we go. We've got that. Why can Haley see you nine? Uh, oh, because I'm the DM, so she's going to be able to see all of them because I'm the DM, even though. These are actually, um, if I go back to here, even though if I double right click on this, they're not globally visible. It's because I'm in as the DM. Right, okay. We got everything done here now. All of our creatures are in, all of our walls are in, all of our locations are in on the journal. Uh, we've put our loot in. The only thing we haven't done on this scene uh, just checking these are all hidden. Yep, zombies doesn't matter. They're indoors. Cultists are indoors. Dragons indoors. That's fine. Um, the only thing we haven't done is work out how to do that hue. The axe that does extra damage or rather does maximum damage when it's attacking uh, plant type creatures. That's the only thing. Um, but everything else is sorted. It's all ready to go. Um, what have I missed, guys? We've got so I've got no sounds in this one. Um, the only thing I want to add on sound-wise is perhaps a, a background wind noise, wind through trees kind of thing, just a little bit of atmosphere, just have quietly in the background. Uh, I think that's all I need for this. Um, no lights required. It's a ruin. Absolutely fine. I think it's good to go. I, I know I've missed something. Of course I've missed something. Um, <laughs> You know what to do. <laughs> Tell me in the comments why I'm a Muppet, please. That would be great. Uh, otherwise, this one's good. Uh, so what do we need to do after this? Let's just pop back to our scenes up here and in Fandelver and below in our Chapter 3. We've done Old Owlwell. We've now done Thunder Tree. That means we still need the town of Connyberry to do, which doesn't have a map and Agatha's Lair. So we've got those two things to do. Uh, we've got Wyvern Tor to do, and then we've actually got Cragmore Castle itself. Um, so those are the next things we're going to do, and then we're going to be able to pretty much finish off um, 
this chapter of the module. I made it sound like it's going to be really quick. It would be really quick if I wasn't so inept um, and if I wasn't recording it. It does take extra time when I'm doing this. Like right now, I'm not being productive. I'm just waffling, aren't I? All right. Thank you very much, guys. You take care and I'll see you in the next one.